and we declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and we don't live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word has no place in our lives. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin, but if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only ours, but also for the sins of of the whole world. I want to tell you this morning that we live in a dirty world. If you knew just how dirty it really is, it would make you OCD for sure. Your world just isn't as clean as you think it is. Do you know that money is one of the dirtiest things that you handle every day? 87% of dollar bills have fecal matter on them and other bacteria that can make you seriously sick. That's why your mother always told you, don't put money in your mouth. Vending machines, ATMs, parking meter kiosks, escalator handrails, public mailbox handles, elevator buttons, all have high levels of bacteria on them that can make you sick. Two-thirds, are you ready for this? Two-thirds of shopping cart handles have fecal matter on them. Gas pump handles are about the dirtiest things that you touch on a regular basis. Ice from fast food restaurant chains has more harmful bacteria in it than the water in most public toilet bowls. The average office desk area, your telephone at work, your computer keyboard, your mouse has 400 times more harmful bacteria on it than the average toilet seat. You are more likely to get sick from your cell phone than from the door handles on public restrooms. Do you know tests have found that most people's cell phone have about 4,000 times the level of harmful bacteria than is permitted in the public drinking water supply, which means that your cell phone is 4,000 times dirtier than New York City tap water that you refuse in restaurants. You like to greet people with a firm handshake? 30% of us don't wash our hands after using the restroom, even though 80% of us say that we do. (laughs) And if you swim in a public pool for an hour, you're likely to ingest about three ounces of urine. (laughs) We live in a dirty world. Your home is not as clean as you think it is either. Most people think that the dirtiest room in their home is the bathroom. It's really the kitchen, with your kitchen sink being the dirtiest place in your entire house. If you're like most people, the inside of your washing machine and the inside of your dishwasher are also two of the dirtiest places in your house. Do you fight over the remote control in your house? Let someone else hold it, just trust me. And while you're at it, make the kids get up and shut the light switches off. You don't even want to know what's on your light switches. Is there a pesky fly buzzing around your house? He is defecating every four to five minutes. Think about that the next time he lands on your dinner plate. If you've had, this one's really gross. If you've had your pillow for over two years, about one third of the weight of your pillow is dead skin cells dust mites and their droppings. I can't even begin to tell you about your toothbrush. If I did, we would cross a line and you'd leave, all right? (laughs) Let me just say this to you. Make sure you put your toothbrush away in the medicine cabinet before you flush the toilet. Enough said. We live in a dirty world and you 
are not as clean as you think you are either. Do you know about 32 billion bacteria live on your skin? In fact, 2 to 3 percent of your overall body weight is comprised of bacteria, fungi, microbes, and parasites. So if you're a 200 pound man, about 6 pounds of you is dirt. You might be surprised to know that the dirtiest part of your whole body is your mouth. It's home to over 500 different kinds of bacteria. Only cats have dirtier mouths than humans. The second dirtiest part of your body is your forearms. Do you like peanut butter? Every half cup of peanut butter contains on average 30 bug fragments in one rodent hair. Sticking with pasta instead? On average, there are about 450 insect fragments in every one pound box of pasta. The average person eats three to four pounds of dirt per year and inhales an average of 14 insects and spiders a year while sleeping with their mouths open. <laughs> Your feet sweat 91 and three quarter cups of sweat every year. Your skin sheds 10 billion cells a day. That's about nine pounds a year. In fact, you change your skin out entirely every seven years. Where does all that skin go? Well, about 90% of household dust is your dead skin. We live in a dirty world. And our world isn't just physically dirty either. Our world is morally dirty. The Boston bombings tell us so. Sandy Hook Elementary School tells us so. The police and the courts and the prisons tell us so. Our own life experience tells us so. Our world is morally dirty. People do bad things all the time. All people, the Bible tells us so. In John, our dirt is called darkness and sin, and it's everyone's problem. And as I look at these verses in 1 John, I find that they answer three questions about our dirty world, and I want to share them with you quickly this morning. Three questions about our dirty world. The first thing is this, how did we get so dirty anyway? How did we get so dirty anyway? The truth is, we are all born dirty. David wrote about that. He said, yes, I was born a sinner from the moment my mother conceived me. We're all born dirty from our first parents, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were created in perfection. They were placed in the middle of a perfect world. We talked about that this last Wednesday evening. We took a fresh look at creation. If you missed that talk on Wednesday evening, you can catch it on our website. And then join us this Wednesday for a fresh look at Jesus. But Adam and Eve, they didn't have to worry about carting around six pounds of dirt with them. But they sinned. They disobeyed God. And when they did, they dirtied themselves. And they dirtied the entire human race after them. Paul wrote about it. He said, sin entered the world through one man, Adam, and death through sin. In this way, death has come to all men. We're all born sinners. We're all born with an inescapable, irresistible compulsion to sin. Paul wrote about it. He said, we're all born selfish and disobedient by our very nature. And he wrote about the frustration that comes with that, a frustration that we all can recognize. He said, a war is raging inside of me. The things I want to do, I don't do. And the things I don't want to do are the things I end up doing. Who can rescue me from this? We're born dirty from our first parents, and we're born dirty from our birth parents, and their parents, and their parents. You know, every day science is catching up a little bit more with the truths that the Bible taught thousands of years ago. Every scientific discovery that's been made in the last 150 years since Darwin support what the Bible says about creation instead of what Darwin said about evolution. Genetic research has uncovered traits in DNA that 
predispose people to certain kinds of sickness and problems and aberrant behaviors. Scientists, you know, have discovered the cancer gene that make people predisposed to getting cancer. Scientists have discovered genes that make people predisposed to addictions. They've discovered genes that make people predisposed to violent or criminal or deviant behavior. God told us about it thousands of years ago. He said the sins of the parents are laid upon the children, affecting the entire family to the third and to the fourth generation. Look up your own family tree. Is there addiction in your family past? Is there alcoholism? Is there anger? Is there abuse? Is there mental instability? Is there emotional instability or deviant behavior? Is there poverty in your family tree? I can bet you dollars to donuts that those very same problems are plaguing the current generation of your family and the up and coming generation of your family. I don't believe that anybody is born gay. And the so-called science that is being used to support that is blatantly unobjective. But I do believe that people are born predisposed to sin. Some predisposed to sexual sin and sexual addictions. And it's because of the dirt that was handed down to us from our parents. We're all born dirty. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Eve. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Dad. Not only are we born dirty, but dirty people have touched us. The biggest culprits in spreading sickness are hands and mouths. People who are sick spread their sickness to us through their hands and through their mouths. And the same holds true for our inner person. Dirty people infect us. They infect us with words that entice they pique our curiosity. They allure us by telling us about things we didn't even know existed. They beguile us to follow them down a path of darkness. It was someone in the ninth grade who introduced Nick to weed, and from there the door was wide open. If you could only go back in time, Knowing what you know today, what situations would you walk away from? What friendships, relationships would you nip in the bud? What advice would you heed that you didn't heed back then? If you could go back, what decisions would you undo? Dirty people infect us with words that entice and with words that slice. They make us feel insecure. They make us feel worthless. They make us doubt that we're loved. They extort our weaknesses. They confuse us. Sometimes dirty people infect us by touching us. What a privilege we had to go minister at the L.A. Dream Center last week. You remember when Pastor Tommy Barnett was here last fall and he told us about the Dream Center. I want to tell you it is everything that he said that it is. I hope that maybe all of you will have a chance sometime in the future to go back and go serve there with me. I have to tell you the truth. If I were young, I would pack my bags and I would go volunteer at the Dream Center and I would never look back. Matthew Barnett gave us a tour of all 13 floors. There's about 800 residents that are living there in recovery right now. On one floor we stopped and there were some young girls who told us their stories about how they've been rescued out of prostitution, how they've been rescued out of dancing in clubs and drug addiction. There was another floor where we stopped and there were some very young moms with scads of little kids and they told us how they were rescued from violent, abusive husbands. But I think the floor that really got to me the most was the floor with the program for 11 to 17 year olds. One 16-year-old boy told us the story of his life. Before he was even born, his father took off. Parents weren't married. From birth to five years of age, he was shuttled back and forth between his father and his mother, who were both drug addicts. Their lives unraveled so badly that he was taken away from his parents, and he was sent to live with his maternal grandmother, who was also a drug addict. She would give him doses of Oxycontin 
and Vicodin and other kinds of drugs to knock him out for two or three days at a time while she went on drug binges. By the time he was 11 years old, he kept being rushed back to the hospital again and again because all the internal organs in his body were beginning to shut down from the drugs that his grandmother was giving him. He was taken away from the grandmother and he went to live with his father who had since gotten married and had two more children. And he said that he tried so hard. He tried his best to be good, to to be helpful, not to, to... make any problems in any way but he was told repeatedly by his father and his stepmother that he was a burden that he was in the way that he was a nuisance that he wasn't wanted they kept him locked in a bedroom most of the time so he began escaping out of the window he got involved with gangs and gang violence crime began dealing drugs he was arrested several times and his father didn't know what to do with him so he sent him to live with his uncle who was also a drug addict and who sexually molested him for two and a half years. There he is at the Dream Center, 16 years old, trying to put his life back together again. Dirty people touched him. They desecrated his body. They messed up his mind. They killed his emotions. They soiled his spirit. They stained his soul. And he's left to do something with this stain that other people have left on him. It's not fair. Dirty people, they cross our path. Can I tell you, the Satan, it's a setup from the devil. He sets up people to meet us, the wrong people at the wrong time in the wrong place to open a door to us and lead us down a path God never wanted us to go down. And then we're left to deal with it all. We're left with a stain of guilt. We're left with shame. We're left with a feeling of worthlessness. We're left to bear the burden of rage and resentment and unforgiveness. How did we get so dirty? We were born dirty. Dirty people came and touched us. But the truth is, we all do dirty things ourselves. Doesn't really seem fair, does it? We were born with this inner compulsion to sin and then dirty people to add insult to injury mess us up. But the truth is, each one of us has done our own dirty things. Paul said sin entered the world through one man, Adam. And death through sin came to every man, listen, because all have sinned. Paul wrote in another place, everyone has sinned and fallen short of God's righteous standard. In another place, he said, there is none righteous, not even one. We all do dirty things. We all lie. We all cheat. We steal. We mistreat people. We betray confidences. We listen to and we repeat gossip. We blame others for problems of our own making. We testify falsely against people. We falsely implicate others for our own wrongdoing. We get hurt, and then we deal out hurt. We take advantage of people to get what we want. We mislead. We manipulate. We ourselves, we seduce people into sin. We're all proud. We're all self-centered. We're all self-gratifying. We're all self-righteous. We have all rebelled against authority of our parents, of our educators, of our church leaders, of our society, and ultimately of God. How did we get so dirty? We're all born dirty. Dirty people have touched us, but the truth is we have all done dirty things ourselves. Who can say? I've kept my heart pure, I'm clean, and I'm without sin. Three questions about our dirty world. How did we get so dirty? And second, how do we react to the news that we're dirty? How do we react to the news that we're dirty? Some of us deny that we're dirty. We don't want to hear it. We don't want anybody telling us that we're dirty because we consider ourselves to be good people. We love our family. We love our neighbors. We love our country. 
When we see the firemen out collecting money, we throw 10 bucks in the boot. When the offering plate comes by, we throw five bucks in the offering plate. Hey, we're doing our best here. It's all in the mind. You're only dirty if you believe you're dirty. So don't tell me I'm dirty. Some of us downplay our dirt by comparing ourselves to others. Can I tell you, compared to the shysters and the looters who have taken advantage of the victims of Superstorm Sandy, you look pretty good. Compared to the Boston bombers, you look pretty good. Compared to the Sandy Hook shooter, you look pretty good. He just joined the notorious tyrants of history in hell. Compared to them, you look pretty good. But listen to me, beloved, just like the tiniest amount of microscopic bacteria can make you sick and even put you on the deathbed, the tiniest amount of sin can condemn you to the same fate as all of those. James says, whoever breaks the law in just one point is guilty of breaking the whole thing. Even one very tiny hole can sink a great big ship. John says, if we deny that we've sinned, we're self-deceived. We don't know the truth. If we deny that we've sinned, we make God out to be a liar. Some of us just don't care that we're dirty. The whole world is dirty after all. I'm dirty, you're dirty, we're all dirty. Just roll in the mud together. Parents are dirty. Public and private educators are dirty. Police are dirty. Politicians are dirty. Profiteers are dirty. Even preachers are dirty. So what's the point? Maybe being dirty isn't really a problem. Or maybe since being dirty is everybody's problem. I don't have to worry about faring any better or any worse than anyone else. But the Bible says that being dirty is a problem because God is clean. God is light. In him is no darkness. He lives in unapproachable light. He is clean and nothing dirty can come near to him. Beloved, everybody look at me. Ultimately, all of our sin is directed against God himself. The dirty things that we do to other people, we actually do to God. David saw another man's wife taking a bath from the roof of his palace. He sent for her and he had his way with her. When she became pregnant, he tried to cover it up. He brought her husband home from the battlefield, got him drunk, and tried to get him to go in and be with his wife. When Uriah refused because he had taken a vow of abstinence, David made a plot to have him killed. He wrote a letter, he sealed it, and he put it in Uriah's hands to carry back to Joab the general with the instructions for how to kill him. Think about all the people that he wronged. He wronged Bathsheba. He wronged Uriah. He wronged the little baby that was conceived from their illicit affair who died under God's judgment. He wronged Joab. He made him a murderer. He wronged his entire family. He wronged the whole army of Israel. And he wronged the entire kingdom of Israel who paid dearly for that sin. What do people say all the time about their sin? Hey, leave me alone. I'm only hurting myself. Wrong. You are hurting everybody. And most importantly, you're hurting God. In the aftermath of all of that, David wrote these words. Against you and you alone have I sinned, God. What does that mean? It means that every wrong that you have ever done to anyone, you have done against God himself. Whether it's stealing someone's crayons in kindergarten or stealing someone's innocence in college, you did it directly to God. And if we remain dirty, 
if we deny that we're dirty, if we downplay our dirt, or if we just don't care, it will seriously diminish the quality of our life here on earth. But more importantly than that, it will send us to the most horrible place conceivable for all of eternity. Why is it so bad to be dirty? It's because God is clean. And if we remain dirty, we cannot connect with Him now and we can't enjoy His beautiful presence forever in heaven. Who may ascend to the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in His holy presence? Only those whose hands are clean, whose heart is pure, those who have not made an idol out of anything else and who never tell lies. Beloved, I tell you this with a broken heart this morning. Some of you idolize pot. Some of you idolize alcohol, pornography, the pills that you depend on. Some of you love weed more than you love God. You love the momentary euphoria, the lift that it gives you more than you love worshiping and obeying and pleasing Him. If you do not lay down that idol and everything else, you will miss out on eternity in heaven with him. Listen to me, pot is a big deal. It is not trifling and it is not funny. And God can help you to get clean. We can help you to get clean. We're equipped, we're prepared, we're ready to help you. How do we react to the news that we're dirty? Some of us try to do it ourselves. Some of us try to make up for the misdeeds of our past by doing good deeds now. It's good to do good. You do well to do good. But if you do good, it doesn't negate the bad you did yesterday. It doesn't make it magically disappear. It's good to help people today, but that does nothing to mend the people that you hurt yesterday. It doesn't take away the sins you've committed against God himself. Some of us try harder and harder to be good. We try hard to improve ourselves. We make resolutions. We set goals. We go to therapy. We join groups. We get active and educated and involved. You know, all those things, they're all fine. They might make you fitter. They might make you smarter. They might make you more interesting and better rounded. They might make you more in touch with your emotions and more expressive. But none of them can make you any less dirty. We can't remove ourselves the inner compulsion to sin that we were born with we can't remove the stains inside that someone else left on us we can't remove the stains that we've put on our own conscience how many of you have still have the little towelette that was on your seat when you came in do you still have it I'm surprised if you didn't open it after my introduction <laughs> think about all the dirt in the world Think about all the, the dirt in your home and think about all the dirt on you. And imagine if this was all that you had to clean it up with. Where would you begin? Would you start with your mouth? Would you start with your hands? Would you start with your neighbor's hands? The thought that we could use this to clean up all the dirt in the world... It's as ridiculous as the thought that we could cleanse ourselves. Isaiah wrote very graphically, all our good deeds are like dirty menstrual rags to God. It's shocking, but that's what the Bible says. In Isaiah 1, God says, let's sit down together. Let's talk. Let's negotiate. What shall we do about your bloody stains? I want them out of my sight. And that leads us to the third question about our dirty world. How did we get, so, how do we react to the news that we are dirty? And finally, how can we get really clean? How can we really get clean? Pastor Jason, you can come and help me. We live in a dirty world. We are dirty people living among an ocean of dirty people. How can we really get clean? Beloved, there is only one thing 
that can clean the dirty nature that came through your bloodline. There is only one thing that can clean the bloody stains that others have left on us. There is only one thing that can clean the guilt that we have made on our own conscience. Only blood can get out blood. The only blood that can cleanse your bloody stains is the blood of Jesus Christ, the spotless Lamb of God. John said, if we claim we haven't sinned, we make God out to be a liar. But in our sin, we have one who advocates before the Father for us, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He himself is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and the sins of the whole world. In just a few words, John gives us the very simple formula for getting clean. Can I tell you, the gospel is so simple that it trips people up. People think that we have to go through all kinds of elaborate steps and all kinds of elaborate ceremonies. It's very, very easy. John says, if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all of our dirt. Your world is dirtier than you thought. You are dirtier than you thought. But you don't have to stay dirty. You can become clean today. It's as easy as A, B, C. A, admit that you're dirty. Our own life experience tells us so. Our conscience tells us so. The Bible tells us so. Right now, the Spirit of God is moving like a wind through this room to tell you so. Don't deny your dirt. Don't downplay your dirt. Don't dismiss it. Don't try to do it yourself. Accept the truth. Jesus calls this poverty of spirit. It's a moment of humility when we realize that we're dirty and we reach out to God for His help. Isaiah had that moment in the presence of God when he fell down on his face and he said, Woe is me. I'm a man of dirty lips living among people of dirty lips. Peter had that moment on a boat in the Sea of Galilee when he fell to his knees and he said, Go away from me, Jesus. I am a sinful man. Paul had that moment on the Damascus Road in the presence of God when he fell down on his face and he said, Who are you, Lord, and what do you want me to do? The Philippian jailer had that moment when he fell down trembling on his knees in a dark prison cell and he said, What must I do to be saved? How can we really be clean? A, B, C, admit. Admit that you need him. B, believe. Believe in Jesus. Believe that He is the Son of God. Believe in the power of His sacrifice on the cross and the power of His resurrection from the grave. Nick was sharing in one of our other services about how it was introduced to a particular type of LSD and on that white sheet, that LSD was in the form of a picture of Jesus Christ. And he said it was the most beautiful artwork that he's ever seen. What a horrible liar the devil is. In that beautiful picture of Jesus was a powerful drug that was a gateway to the demonic realm, to the demonic world. A demon came and confronted him and spoke to him while he was on that trip. And when Nick said the name of Jesus, that thing fled away and he was instantly delivered from the high that he was on. believe that Jesus can take your dirt away. The Bible says that he is able to save you completely. That means that Jesus doesn't just help you make baby steps. He doesn't just help you make little improvements. Jesus comes and he gives you an extreme makeover, character addition. You're not just going to get a little bit better than you were. You're going to get all the way free because whom Jesus sets free is free indeed.
It's okay if you still have questions. It's okay if you, you don't understand how it all works together. It's all right. This Wednesday, we're going to be talking about Jesus, and we're going to be describing to you some of the mechanics of salvation and, and how his sacrifice uh, on the cross results in all of these things in our lives. But it's okay. You don't have to have it all put together. You just have to believe. How can we really be clean? Ask, believe, A, B, C, and finally confess. Confess that Jesus is Lord. Confess Him as your Lord. Him and Him alone. Confess that He is your leader and that you're His follower for the rest of your life. Three questions about our dirty world. How did we get so dirty? How do we react to the news that we're dirty? And finally, how can we really be clean? Only through the blood of Jesus. I've asked Pastor Jason to share an old hymn of the church. I want you to give a listen. If you know the words, sing along. Thank you, Pastor Jason. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make all again nothing but the blood of Jesus what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus what can be is the flow that makes me white as snow no other found I know nothing but the blood of Jesus oh precious is the Jesus, a great big praise in this place. This Thank you, Lord. 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 Come on, would you bow your heads all over this place with me? Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, convict and convince. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. Holy Spirit, right now, open hearts Holy Spirit come listen to these words in the aftermath of everything that happened with Bathsheba and Uriah after their little baby died David wrote these words have mercy on me O God according to your unfailing love blot out my transgressions wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin against you and you only have I sinned I've done evil in your sight you are right when you say so yes I was born a sinner from the moment my mother conceived me but you desire truth in my innermost being cleanse me and I shall be clean Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. Don't cast me away from your presence. Don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Give me the joy of your salvation and grant me an obedient spirit. 
that I might follow you from now on. Bow your heads with me all over this place. You know, 5.30 service last night was rough. 8.30 service this morning was rough. But at 10 o'clock, the Holy Spirit showed up. And we had breakthrough. We had people who experienced the miracle of God's cleansing. I wonder if there's someone here in this service, this last service of the day, and you've never had that moment where you've received God's cleansing. You've never had that moment where you've admitted what the Word says about you is true, that you're dirty, and that you need God to come and wash you. I wonder if there's someone here you've never reached out to Jesus for his cleansing. Today is your day. Listen, don't deny. Don't downplay it. Don't dismiss it. Don't try and do it yourself. It will not work. Only Jesus. If you're here today and you want to pray a prayer like a bunch of people did in the last service to receive Jesus' cleansing, I want to lead you in that prayer. And while heads are bowed all over this place, I want you to just lift up your hand real high wherever you are. I want to pray to receive his cleansing. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, there's six, seven, there's eight. Come on, there's nine. Come on, 10, 11, 12. I can't count. There's 13. There's hands going up all over this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now listen, I want to ask you, prayer teams, I want you to come quick. I want to ask you to do something very bold this morning. I had a boy in our last service who grew up in our church, and something awesome happened. Jesus set him free in this last service. I want to ask you to do something very bold. What Jesus did for you, he did on a cross in front of the whole world to see. And I want to ask you, if you want to receive his cleansing, would you take a bold step? of getting out of your seat and coming down here to the front. If you came with somebody today, I want you to just grab their hand and squeeze it and let them know that you want them to walk with you. Come on, would you get out of your seat right now? If you want to pray to receive his cleansing, would you just get out of your seat and come on down here right now? Come on, you can do it. Come on, you can do it. Come on, here they come. Come on, grab somebody's hand and let them know. Come on, here they come. Come on, come on. Here comes some more. Come on, give him a big hand. This is a big step. Come on. Come on all the way down to the front. Come on all the way down to the front. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, keep coming. Listen. Come on, right down. Today, if you hear his voice, don't close your heart. Today, if the Holy Spirit's touching on your heart, don't close your voice. Get out of your seat and come. Come on, prayer teams, come. Come right here. Come uh, come stand with them. Make sure everybody has something to stand. Come on, sing it. Oh, precious is the flow. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me wide as stone. is the flow that makes me wide and slow no other sound I know nothing but the blood of Jesus listen to me I just say this one last time it's not too late to get out of your seat and come down here. It's not too late to get out and come down here. Come on, if you need to come, come today. It's a good day. It's a very good day. If you need to come, get out of your seat and come. I want everybody to lift your hands all over this place. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Those of you here at the altar, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And for those of you in your seats, listen, if you've already said this prayer before, it feels so good to say it again because Jesus, he just keeps washing and washing and washing and washing us. And when we do, the power of God is going to come in this place 
and he's going to make you clean. Come on, there's some more people coming. There's still time to come. Let's just, let's just celebrate them. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, who else needs to come? Who else needs to come? Get out of your seat and come. Today, if you hear his voice, don't close your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, lift up your hands, everybody. Let's say this together. I'm going to lead you, follow. Father, thank you for loving me. Father, thank you for sending your only son. Jesus, thank you for coming. You lived for me. You died on the cross for me. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you rose from the dead. I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord. Jesus, I need you. I admit I'm dirty. I was born a sinner. Dirty people have touched me. I've done dirty things. Jesus, forgive me. Wash me. Jesus, make me clean. Take away my sin nature. Take away my stains. Take away my guilty conscience. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Jesus. I confess you now as my Lord and the leader of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's just celebrate. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Listen, just, just real softly, real softly, just sing, Oh, the blood of Jesus. And our prayer teams are just going to pray a little bit more. Just real softly, Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood. Of Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus, it washes white as snow, oh, the blood. And oh, the blood of Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus, it washes white. about the blood
sing it again. All the blood of Jesus. 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 It washes white as snow. I want everybody at the altar to just stay where you're put. We're going to dismiss quietly now. Listen, if you want in on this, if you want part of what the Holy Spirit's doing right now, we're going to dismiss quietly. I want you to just quietly come to the altar. We're just going to keep praying, going to keep ministering to people. Holy Spirit's pulling on some of you. It's your day. Come on. It's time. Let's do it today. I want to say two things quickly. Just stay at the altar right where you are if you're here. Number one, there's a postcard in your bulletin called Clean. If you know somebody who's bound, if you know somebody who's addicted, half of all adults in the United States are addicted to painkillers, to uppers, downers, in-betweeners, pills to make them go to sleep, prescription pills to get up again. They can be free from that. You know, somebody who's, we're going to have a weed weekend coming up. We're going to deal with the issue of weed. It's not funny. You know, somebody who needs to get free, pray over this postcard and put it in their hand.